So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to interrogate the patient. We're going to come to our quick look screen here. So we're going to look at our presenting rhythm. So we see the patient's A-sensed, V-paced. So we know that they have some sort of AV block. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the pacing percentages for this patient. So patient percentages are A paced 13.3%, B paced 61.2%. Uh, we're going to look at our patient information. So we'll click the chevron here, take a look at our patient information, and then we're going to see if there's any information in here that helps us understand what's going on with the device. Uh, then we'll go back to our quick look screen and we're going to see what does our battery show. So our battery is 5.5 years. If I click where it says remaining longevity, it's going to give me the minimum and maximum for what the battery life is. Next, I'm going to look at my lead impedance curve. So I'm going to look at my trending on my quick look. I can also click where it says lead trends and pull up my impedance trends that way as well. I want them to be steady and stable over time. So they should have a, a straight line kind of coming across in both your bipolar and unipolar trending. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to start with my test and I'm going to do my lead impedance test. So I click on lead impedance and then I'm going to go ahead and hit start measurement. And it's going to give me lead impedance measurements from there. Those should be similar to what the device has measured prior. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a sensing test. To make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and just do the sensing test in VVI. And what this does is it just offers backup pacing support at VVI at the rate at which we have programmed. I can start at 40 and see if this patient has an underlying that comes in at 40. I'll hit start measurement. If I don't see anything come in at 40, I can bring it down to 30 as the test is going on and see if there's an underlying for this patient. Once I see the underlying and the test ends, I'm gonna hit the camera button up top and make sure I get a screenshot of what that is so I can see what my underlying is and save a PDF of that, of my sensing test and generate report. Next, what I'm gonna do is a threshold test. So I'll hit that little three uh, lines at the top again. I'm gonna go into tests. I'm gonna go into pacing threshold. And then I'm gonna start top to bottom. So I'm gonna go into my atrium amplitude and hit okay. I'm going to run my atrial threshold test in DDD, and I'm going to do a press and hold. I want to make sure the rate is above the intrinsic rate. So this patient's intrinsic rate is in the high 70s, so I want to make sure that my lower rate is going to be above that, so 90 is fine. I'm going to start at 2, and I'm going to do a press and hold test and see when I lose capture. So the second I lose capture, I'm gonna take my finger off that press and hold test. I'm gonna look at my test strip down at the bottom here and verify when I actually lost capture. You can see that I lost capture at 0.5 volts. So my threshold is gonna be 0.75. I'm gonna PDF this as an uh, RA amplitude threshold test so I have the strip saved. What did I say it was? 0.75. So I'm going to keep that at 0.75 as a final number. Now I'm going to do my ventricular threshold test. So I'm just going to change the chamber to RV. I'm going to do this in VVI just because it's easier to see. I'm going to start at 2 again. And again, it's just another press and hold test. Second I lose capture, I'm going to come off with my finger again, and I'm going to see that I lost capture at 0.75 for this patient, where I had that V pace with no um, waveform following that. I'm going to PDF this one again as my RV amplitude trend, generate report. So my threshold I lost at 0.75, so my threshold is 1 for this patient. I'm just going to make sure that number is correct there. go back to my quick look screen and I can kind of look at my observations. I can also go into where it says data under where it has clinical diagnostics and I can start to kind of click through and see any arrhythmia episodes and whether they're true arrhythmia episodes. To make this bigger you can click on the magnifying glass at the bottom corner 
and then you can see the plot, the EGM, and then the text of each episode. If you click that magnifying glass, it makes it smaller, and you can do this for each one, or you can just arrow down for each episode. So that's actually a true episode engagement. From there, I can go back to here. I can look at my cardiac compass trends, take a look to see my ATAF burden, patient activity, heart rate variability, pacing percentages. I can go back, look at my rate histograms, and see if there's a good rate distribution. And then I can also look at counters if I wanted to look at counters and see PBC burden and ATAF episodes, prior session, last session. Once I do all of that, if I wanted to make any changes, I would go into parameters. This is where I'd make any changes. And then once I'm done with that, we go to session. We can either do a final report or you can do a session summary, generate a report, and then you have everything that you can print out from.